Is it just me, or does everybody seem like they're always wanting bigger and bigger 3D printers? Is it possible we're going in the wrong direction today? I thought we'd take a look at the new GTEC M1 Mini and ask a huge question. Could small 3D printers be the next big thing? When GTEC first contacted me about this 3D printer, I pretty much said no. How dare you? I mean, it's small. No, actually, it's tiny. But when I looked into it, I kind of started to get it. Why not small? I mean, it only has a print area of 100 millimeters by 110 millimeters by 100 millimeters, so you're not gonna print a full-size helmet. Well, I'm not. No judgment if your head could do that. But since I've already started with some of the specs, let me give you a few more that may amaze you as much as it did me. The GTEC M1 Mini has a direct drive extruder and that has a dual drive gear. It has high torque stepper motors, has a max nozzle temp of 230 degrees Celsius with a max bed temp of 60 degrees Celsius. A little low, but still acceptable has a large cooling fan, a print speed of up to 250 millimeters a second. And, and here's where it kind of got a little crazy. They have input shaping firmware, pressure advanced functionality. It'll print TPU and other flexible filaments. And it has a fully automatic 16 point leveling system with a filament runout sensor. That's as good as a lot of things out there for a lot more money and a lot bigger. And all of that's for a 3D printer here that can almost print a four inch square cube. Now, the case isn't completely enclosed as you see here, but the size and the colors, well, I will say this, it had my wife and my daughter squealing like, a, well, girls over how cute it is. Now, right out of the box, it only took a few minutes to remove the packing from the inside, snip a few zip ties, hook up the PTFE tube on the side there for the filament, and get an auto leveling started. And yes, I actually really do mean a few minutes. The menu is pretty easy to navigate, and considering all that it does, it has a nice layout, especially considering that 2.4 inch LCD screen. So after doing all of that, let's see how it prints. Now recently, it seems like Orca Slicer is my personal choice for all my printers. You can also use Cura for this one as well. And once I had the M1 set up, I was just ready to start slicing. Except I had to find some models first, you know, that would fit on that build plate. Yeah, that's the problem, it's too big. <laughs> and I needed to figure out how to get the filament spool on the side of the printer. See, this little arm that gets installed when you set it up, it's really only good for a half or a quarter size spool. So if you want a full size spool, well, it doesn't quite fit because the power cord, it just sort of sits on there and it's not going to turn, it's not going to work. There's nothing on the website that I could find that will help you with this, but fortunately an awesome designer on Cults 3D created this standoff adapter arm and honestly, it works perfectly. It only took me about 30 minutes to print on another printer, and I was in business. And there you go, ready to print. The micro SD card comes with an older version of Orca Slicer. It also has a pre-sliced version of Benchy, a cat, and an astronaut, and of course, had to do Benchy first.
Now the web page for the M1 Mini claims the Benchy only takes 29 minutes and with this size, that's pretty decent. And I know that seems slow compared to a lot of other printers, but in my estimates and from what I was looking at, that print time was exactly right. And it turned out incredible. First off, I have to mention, they sent this blue filament over along with it, and all I can say is it's pretty, and it makes these prints look great. So the build plate's pretty thin. Um, I think it's going to hold up just fine, but I would like to see some options available for maybe some different ones. And I looked around online, I just didn't see anything with this form factor, that size. So, you know, hopefully they're going to come up with something to fix for that. As far as the filament spool problem goes though, I think that's probably a pretty big oversight for them. Hopefully they're going to get an official fix that won't require us to have to print something, especially since you can't get filament into it with a normal spool. It is interesting to me though how things like this get designed. I don't know what might be on the other side here that could prevent them from putting that filament spool holder over there, but for me, really, that looks like that would have been the best place for it. But right now, get this little offset going and everything works fine. You just have to reach around to turn everything on. And also there's a USB port down there. Really, if that's it, it's not much to complain about. And I've had and still have way worse problems with some of my 3D printers that I've had for quite a few years. And other than the build plate size, this M1 Mini, I have to say it probably beats those hands down. I'd like to say for me that I would keep using the M1 for little prints like this, but unfortunately it's already been claimed by my wife going to uh, her schoolroom library as soon as possible. So wonder who's going to get called for tech support if that ends up being needed. Hello IT, have you tried turning this off and on again? But what about you? Could you see yourself getting something this small like the M1 Mini? I think this could really be an awesome first 3D printer for anyone at any age. But let me know what you think in the comments. Check out my other videos while you're there if you want to learn more about other printers and different things about 3D printing. And let's just continue to have fun printing all the small stuff as we continue to learn create and amaze.